everybody. <laughs> We're here for our team call. And tonight, first of all, it's it's a it's Nikki Cotton's birthday. So we are uh, stepping in and bringing you all some amazing trainers tonight and allowing Nikki to have a night off. And Heidi's doing her awesome tech work like she always does. And so uh, we are here tonight with two very special people. And Janine and Carl, I just recently met and they're our newest team members uh, and they live in Panama. And so they were very attracted to the tower garden and just the, the need for the dire need for plants in Panama. So that's how they got connected to us. And in the process of getting to know them, I learned that they are coaches with the Secret Life Institute and they have a wide range of topics that really get down deep into, you know, how people operate, function, what their beliefs are, their subconscious uh, self-limiting beliefs, and lots of things that we've heard about. Um, but in talking with Carl and Janine, you know, they said, we want to give you something new um, that you haven't heard that you can really use. And that's where the title for this talk tonight, Motivate from Within, came from. So I'm going to uh, just introduce them and let them take over from here. Uh, it's going to be, you know, I've prepped them for half half hour. Uh, we can might go over a couple minutes because we usually end this at 6.30, Janine and Carl. So just to give you that, that um, um expectation. So Janine, Lori, and Carl Schertzer are co-founders of Secret Life Institute. Janine is a leading expert in personal development, helping individuals tap into their authentic selves and unleash their unique gifts. Her groundbreaking approach focuses on healing the wounded child and reconnecting with the child essence where solutions reside. Janine is internationally acclaimed for her life-changing methods, has received numerous awards, published best-selling books, and created global training programs for clients and practitioners. And Carl is an internationally board-certified trainer and acclaimed master practitioner of Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP, a master hypnotherapist, accredited astropsychologist, and a celebrated transformational guide. He offers powerful tools, perspectives, and techniques to purposefully influence interactions, experiences, and aspirations, sharing secret principles to master one's own story and empowering individuals to evolve their lives, unleash their full potential, and become the best version of themselves. So with that, it's a pleasure to have Janine and Carl here training us tonight. Thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure. It, it really is an honor. And it's, I couldn't believe this is my first meeting. <laughs> so we just literally met a few weeks ago and um, it just clicked and everything just kind of singed together. So... Well, thank you so much, all of you, and happy birthday to Nikki from a distance. Um, and it's just, um, it's really exciting again to be here and to congratulate all of you again for your leadership. This is one of my favorite things to talk about, what we're actually talking about tonight. Um, it's just something that's really important to me um, in my journey and my process. And I'm going to share a little bit about that with you today. And hopefully you're here because you wanna be the best leaders that you can be. You're here because you wanna motivate your team. You wanna be a difference and change the lives, change somebody's life and change your reality, change all of the things that you see in your reality and to the better. And this is what we gain when we do this work that we're gonna share with you. And hopefully that's motivation enough to be able to be the best that you can be and be able to be a positive influence in the world. And so creating positive change to me is one of the best gifts that I could give back to other people. And so that's always my motivation is how can I be the best leader? And of course, um, I've gone through a journey and a half in order to get to this place where I am right now. It didn't happen overnight. Um, you know, I, I thought that maybe it would, but it didn't happen that quickly and that easily. Um, I do have a story that brought me of course, to Juice Plus, but also to where I am right now in my journey um, as a leader, as somebody who, you know, speaks to people all over the world and tries to motivate change um, on an individual level. Um, and so, you know, it started for me, first off, just to give you a little bit of background. I'm a type one diabetic and I've had type one diabetes for about 25 years now. And so that has always been one of my motivators to try to live as healthy as I possibly could. 
um, wellness has been my mojo. <laughs> and so um, I was gifted, and I say gifted diabetes um, when I was 21 years old, and it changed my life. Um, most people would probably think it was one of the more difficult things, but I looked at it as a way that I can motivate myself to make a change in my own life in a way that I probably wouldn't have thought to do that. And so this goes into more of the story of how we can motivate from within. So I say I was gifted a challenge when I was only 21 years old. And at that point in time, I wasn't prepared for what that meant. Um, I went on with life. I learned how to take care of myself. I learned how to give myself injections, how to be my own nurse, how to do all the things to think about just about everything that was going in my body. Um, and this was my life. I learned how to deal with it. And then I met my fantastic partner that you're all seeing here, Carl. And we decided we were going to get married and we wanted to have a child, which was difficult as a type one diabetic. I didn't really know what that meant. And I had to now learn something new, which was how do I care for my body while I'm pregnant as a type one diabetic? And that was a new learning journey. Fast forward, our son was born with complications. It was a very difficult, very um, hard process with him being born. And then both of us, we almost didn't make it. And since the moment he was born, he had complications. And that set me on a now a different learning journey. It was not so much again about my own health. Now it was about the health of someone else. And I did everything I could to try to help him through the journey. And I think about maybe the age of four, I had taken him to over 11 different doctors and I was trying to fix it, trying to help him. He wasn't walking. He wasn't talking. I took him to many different specialists. Um, he was born premature. So that was, we knew that he would have some complications there, but I just wanted to help. I wanted to make sure as a mother, this is what we do, right? We look out for our children. We'll do anything for them. And it was just really hard. He had complications that nobody understood what to do with. And I wasn't getting answers through anything that we were doing. None of the doctors were helping me. Um, and it was frustrating. And I just remember um, just moment after moment after moment, trying to do so much externally, trying to change his diet, um, take him to, you know, one specialist, I tried so many things. I mean, it's, if there's a diet, nutritional plan, anything out there, exercises, um, I went to so many different doctors and it was actually getting progressively worse. And there was just one moment where I tried I tried one last thing and he just got worse and I wasn't seeing any progress and I just lost it. It was just one of those moments where I had one of those dark nights of the soul moments where I was just in a ball crying. I just didn't know what to do. Um, I couldn't help him. And at that moment, I just had this thought and it was calmness came over me and I was in the, it felt like misery, but it was calmness. And a thought came over me, maybe I'm not here to fix him and change this. Maybe this is happening to change me. And it was an awakening moment where instead of me trying to change him in the situation, the only thing I could do was to look within. That was it. And that was the moment where I began my journey um, to where I am right now as a leader and sharing some of the work that I do now. Um, it didn't just begin there. I mean, well, it did begin there. I mean, it, it was a process. Um, but what began there was looking further and further into myself. I began to do, I was always into self-help, but I don't think I really processed what that meant at that point. I don't think I really was able to look at how my external reality was a reflection of what was happening within myself. And it took that moment of being broken on the floor crying because I couldn't help my son to realize the only thing that I can control in my life right now is myself, is my reaction to what happens in my reality. This is it. I can't change this. I can't do anything with it. And, you know, anyone who's a parent, anyone who has an, a loved one who cares and wants to help them knows that we will do anything to help the ones that we love. And in this moment, I knew the only thing I could do was to help the ones that I love by helping myself. And so this was my beginning of my journey. I began figuring out what that meant. What does that mean <laughs> to help oneself? 
what does that mean to actually go within? I thought that I knew what that meant, right? But I really didn't. And I started to really, um, now I have a background in psychology. Um, I also have a background in education. I have a master's degree in teaching and psychology. I understood studying the human mind. I studied human behavior, um, but I just didn't really understand what it meant to study my own behavior. I was really good at studying other people's behavior, but I really wasn't so good at studying my own. And better yet, I wasn't really so good at understanding what my behavior was doing to the external reality as well. I had no idea that how I was feeling so stressed out, how I was crying and, and I was actually making my situation with my son worse, right? I mean, how stressed out he must have been to have a mom that was so stressed out. You know, how much that was influencing my external reality to not be able to find the peace and the calm within. And so I began to really look at this and I began to really reflect on witnessing how as I changed what was going on with my mindset, with what was what I was feeling and what I was presenting externally and how I was reflecting back to myself what was happening, happening externally and asking the questions, okay, this is what's happening. How does that have to do with me? I began to see my son changing. He, he shifted, he began to heal. And not only did he begin to heal, things started to come to me that could help him to heal. Like for example, Juice Plus <laughs> and some of the amazing things that could help his system to heal and to catch a break. And so I saw there was magic in this. I was jumping on board with the more that I go within, the more that I can actually create change in my external reality. This to me was, was a huge bonus. I, I had to continue. And so I just kept doing it and I began to understand more and more what it meant to lead from within. And this became my practice. It became my mantra. It became anytime I would see something that was triggering me externally, I would say, how does this have to do with myself? What can I do within myself? How, and of course, I then began to backtrack further into the work that I specialize in now, which is healing that wounded inner child and really understanding how to nurture that aspect. Um, because if something was triggering me, where is that coming from? What ended up happening again was magic. Our son is now um, 14 years old. And we, as you know, we moved to a foreign country, which we never thought that we would be able to do. We packed up everything in Southern California where we, that was home for many, many years. And um, this is coming from a situation where he was not able to go outside of his routine for many years. Um, we couldn't do certain things that other kids were able to do. I couldn't have him in gym class. He couldn't be in extracurricular activities. It was too hard in his immune system. Um, a lot of things that we didn't think that we could ever do. And we decided to do something that most people never do, let alone a child that had special needs. And um, so he's now 14 years old and he's thriving and he's amazing and he's healing and he's healthy. And um, I truly believe it has everything to do with the fact that we have learned how to work with ourselves to help him. And it's not just him, of course, he's my example, but this goes through everything. This goes through how I lead in the world with everything. Um, I witness myself and I witness how my external reality is a reflection of what's going on within myself. And in that, I can lead with purpose. I could lead a team. I can help people. I can reflect. I can have empathy. I can have compassion. I can know, you know exactly where to take people that are on my team, for, exa for example, um, and understand that that process is very much happening within myself. And it's made me a better person um, for everyone that I come into contact with, and it's made me a happier human being. So um, with that said, I'm going to give the floor to Carl so he can explain a little bit more about this process of going within. Hello. So I don't know if I'm the choppy one or it's collectively choppy. So my apologies if I don't come through very clearly. But what I'm going to do over the next 18 minutes is I'm going to take what Janine just said, which is really the nature of this um, conversation leading within and um, 
I'm going to make it make sense from less of a esoteric hoopla and let's get into the nuts and bolts of how your mind works so you can really understand how to lead from within. Uh, maybe you've heard this information before, probably not, but I'm going to link together things you may have heard and I'm gonna go really fast and it's a lot of information. I'm gonna stay high level, but there's always room for questions. So if I could share my screen uh, and let me know if you see our logo. Okay, so let's just get into it. So the whole idea of, of leading from within is in the nature of let's look at actually what is happening in your mind. And this is called the nature of reality. And what I'm going to talk about here is I'm going to use a visual example for help. And we have the external and the internal. And this is the basis of what we're going to do. So here's what happens in your mind and everyone you know and anyone that's alive. This is what happens. So usually what starts off the game is if you're unaware that we have um, each and every one of us is being bombarded with information in our environment. 2.3 million bits per information per second is just a number some people throw out there. All I want you to know is you, me, and everyone else is being completely bombarded by information constantly. Way too much that you can process. And what happens is you then have it go through your five senses, right? So you have information. You're looking through your eyes, you see someone walking in front of you, you see a car go by, all of this stuff. You see things, you hear things, you taste things, you touch things, and you smell things, right? So once that happens and it enters into our body, we cannot process 2.3 million bits per second, and most people don't need to. Children with autism struggle a little bit more here than other people, but what we all do is we have to make that a very functional number. So we take 2.3 million bits of information per second from the environment and we do three things. We delete things, we distort things, and we generalize things. Now you may understand this if you've ever been looking for your keys and you're late and you're like, where are my keys? And you can't find them, but then all of a sudden they're right in front of you, right? This is an example of how we, dis uh, how we delete things or distort things. You ever get into a conversation with someone and someone may say something like, you know, I really love you. And then you hear someone else say, I knew you always hated me. And they go, wait, what? That doesn't make sense. Or you have two siblings that have two different sides to a story. See, we distort things. And then we generalize things so we can function in this world. So for example, uh, you learned how to open a door when you were younger. And because of that, you can open all doors. You don't have to remember every color door, every size door, every type of handle. We have learned to generalize. So in your environment, what happens is you absorb information and then you delete, you distort, and you generalize all of that down to less than 1%. So let me give you some fun examples here. Do me a favor and read this to yourself. Okay, now if you're like most people, you read Paris in the Spring, right? But some people read differently and they start to realize that there's something wrong with this. Some people say, well, wait a minute, is it Paris in the Spring or is it Paris in the, the Spring? Now, if you saw Paris in the Spring, this is a great example of how your mind will delete the extra word because it's not necessary and it does it automatically. And you're doing this constantly every second of the day. So do me a favor and break this up into a sentence. And what do you read? Okay. Now, you're either someone that believes love is now here or you believe that love is nowhere. But here is a distortion of a word to fit your model of reality. Half of you are probably thinking love is now here. It's beautiful. And the other half are struggling to find love. There you go. So here's one more for you. Read this backwards for me. And just in your mind really quickly, and perhaps you saw the cat was the rat, or maybe you saw the cat was the tar. Now, if you saw the cat was the rat, here's an example of generalization where your mind takes over and fills the blank of what needs to be there. 
Now, these are really fun, simple examples, but every second of every day that you're doing those things, deletion, distortion, and generalization, and you are doing it by what's called filters. Now, you have heard in these conversations of mental health and mind, uh, mind frame about decisions, right, or beliefs. Got to check into your beliefs. So what do you believe? So what happens is we have all our other information we absorb through our environment and we delete and we distort and we generalize through different filters, different color glasses. For example, when I was very young, I almost drowned. So when I look at going into the ocean, I have fear. My friend who's a surfer looks at the ocean and he has excitement because we have different memories of the ocean. So each and everything listed and more are ways that you will construct your reality to fit what you believe to be true. So again, we take all the information and we delete, distort, and generalize through the filters and out comes what you think is your reality, the movie in your mind. It has pictures, sounds, and feelings, and tastes, and touch. And this is how you perceive reality. Okay. If you close your eyes and you make a visual, you can understand the movie in your mind. So here's where it gets important for our conversation today. So now you have the movie in your mind, which took all of the information, 100% of the information and brought it down to less than 1% to fit how you see the world based on your beliefs, your values, your identities, and everything else listed. So your reality is filtered based on that. So now here, if we continue on, you intermix that movie in your mind with physiology and that becomes your state, your emotional state. Now from your emotional state, now you have behaviors and you have external results, okay? So this is generally how everybody's mind works. If you think of it this way, if you're taking 100% of information and extracting less than 1%, what information will you see? What's important to you, what you focus on, but most of it's gone, right? So there's so many more options than what you see. So why I'm bringing this all up and throwing a lot of information, by the way, is this something new to you or uh, is this exciting for you so far? Fascinating. So taking a look, Taking a look at all this now, I want to go back to this concept. We'll talk about Jadine's story, but what I'm going to teach you about is this notion called sacred mirrors. And while it means so much more than what I'll share, sacred mirrors equally means that what is being presented in your environment, in your everyday, is a reflection of what is projecting inside. And you can see this. Because we have information that we delete, distort, and generalize through what we believe to be true, then we create our own reality based on what we believe. And then that presents in your immediate experience. So this is called sacred mirrors. So imagine you have this thing happening, and then there's this loop. So you feel like maybe you have a team member that isn't working very hard and you're witnessing that they're not working very hard and now it goes back into your system, validating what you believe, okay? So if we were to talk about Janine's story for a second, this is where I wanna bring your attention. So what happened with Janine's story besides being a beautiful story was the one thing that shifted her reality was the moment she realized that maybe it wasn't, she wasn't here to fix her son, our son, he was here to fix us, which became an identity change. She, by the grace of whatever, one day woke up and said, I am no, I am, which is identity, no longer supposed to do X, I am supposed to do Y. And because she had that realization, her entire environment changed because the filter changed, the internal representation changed, which means her state would change. She felt hopeful and possible. Her behavior changed and it allowed a different outcome and hence came things like Juice Plus, different people, different environment. So how you lead from within is understanding that there is no such thing as combing the mirror. 
Combing the mirror means you're standing in front of the mirror and you want to comb your hair, but you keep combing the mirror to fix your hair. It doesn't work. To fix your hair, you need to comb your hair, and then you would see the reflection. So let's say you're having a challenging situation with a team member, and now you start to understand the basis of sacred mirrors, and your team member is never on time or whatever have you. The idea is to realize that this team member is actually reflecting something you have within. Now, you've talked about belief systems, it sounds like, so you get that if you change your belief, things can happen. But looking here, I want you to understand why, why things are beginning to change, why the first place that you should always go is internal, because you cannot make a change externally if you still have the same filters. So I want to bring this because we're running uh, to time and I want to open some questions. I want to talk about two things that you can do. This is a lot of information, but let's hone it down to actual tangible items that you can do. The first thing I'm going to cover, which is to, if you were to go back here, if you were to focus on your physiology, this is something you can do today as a leader. So there, the first thing is to focus on physiology, and Tony Robbins is very common talking about this, which is, let's say you have unresourceful beliefs and values and identities, and you don't know what to do about it, and you're trying to get help, but yet it's not changing. If you change your physiology, you change your state temporarily. So let's say you're not feeling really motivated about your call. Take a look at how you're sitting. Take a look at how you're standing. Take a look at the power pose you may or may not be in. And you have the power to shift that instantly. By leading from within, you go, okay, what is a more resourceful state that I can be in and physically stand in that state? And you can do this. If you think about someone that's in a hurry, you probably can see what they look like. Or someone that's confident, you probably know what they look like. And it's a proven fact that if you stand confidently, you will induce a confident state for a short period of time. How do you think you change in the long haul? Beliefs, values, identities. And this is not uncommon to know. So because this is a lot, the second thing you can do, and I'm going to give it to Janine to go through these, is you can start now realizing that while you may not fully get it, realizing that your team is going to reflect the challenges and concerns you have within, it's time to start asking different questions to yourself to gain the deeper message and learning. When you learn how to ask the right questions, the right answers start to come. So Janine, would you be open to going through the three questions we gift them today? Okay, I think you're muted. So the first question that you can consider is this, go for it. So I can't hear Janine, so I'm just gonna keep okay. going. Um, I, I which believe is the I'm first unmuted. question you can ask yourself <laughs> is, there you are. Okay. What is my, thank you. What is my current experience possibly showing me? So what I like to share, bringing it back to my story, this was the awakening for me was I had to look at what was the reflection within myself. And so I like to share this with people as looking at triggers. If something is really triggering you, it is, I, I mean, a lot of people want to make the triggers go away. I actually think that triggers and the things that are emotionally moving you are great information for you to figure out where it is you need to look within yourself. If something is really bothering you that someone else is doing, especially if it's an inappropriate emotional reaction, this is information. And we need to really look at that. If so-and-so is doing that, um, where is that reflected within yourself and why is that bothering you? And usually just taking a minute to reflect on it and noticing it is enough to get to some information so that you can get to the root. When was, so once you start to begin to feel into that trigger situation, you could begin to ask yourself those questions if you really begin to slow down enough to say, when was the first time you experienced this, if you're feeling something? Now, this can sometimes take a little bit of time, you know, because if we're really emotionally charged, you might 
not be able to get there. But if you allow yourself to process it, and sometimes this trigger will come up a lot. You know, sometimes you'll notice that that same trigger was happening maybe last week or another person, or you've had somebody that did this to you 10 years ago. And then if you really feel into it, you will usually be able to get yourself to a place where you can allow yourself to feel into it and see where something like that was affecting you in the beginning when you first experienced it. And so this takes practice too. Um, like I said, we've been doing this for many, many years, but the more that you become comfortable doing this, the easier it will be to begin to do that self-reflection when these things come up. What would you like to feel or believe instead? So after you begin to do the self-reflection process and you feel into where this is coming from, you could get to the root of why it is you're feeling these emotions and begin to see where it is you'd like to be instead of that. And that's when you could begin to make those changes and understand why it is that's bothering you in the first place and begin to see maybe what it is that's bothering you that's externally um, driven. So usually let's just say it's a team, a teammate. Um, we'll go back to somebody on the team who's maybe unmotivated. Um, we can possibly see if this is really bothering you that you have somebody that you're working with that's just not motivated to do anything. Um, perhaps we can do some self-reflection and feel into that and say, well, where are the areas that I'm not motivated? Where is it that I'm not giving my all? Where is it that maybe I'm not putting my energy into the right places? I'm, I'm seeing that they're not doing that, but is there an aspect of myself that I'm really not doing that as well? And this is kind of how we can self-reflect and we can look at what's happening externally. And of course, also seeing um, when was the first time I began to feel that? Was there something that was stopping me from wanting to be motivated in those areas? And maybe it's time to change that. Maybe that's not serving me anymore. And that's when we begin to see the good stuff in it, when we, we could see where it's coming from and begin to self-reflect in that way. Oh, I think Carl's- <laughs> He's muted, yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. To end that, the, the thing to gather is when it comes to your subconscious, what you focus on grows. So that last question is very, these are simple questions because your subconscious mind speaks like a seven-year-old. These are simple questions that extract important information because that last question, what would you like to feel instead, continues the story for you. It's not that you're frustrated that ends the story. The story is, how do I turn this? How would I like to feel instead, which then opens the door for something to come in. And of course, when Carl was now, saying- having that said that, we are 19 seconds. <laughs> I was going to add one last thing because you said it. It was golden. He said you your subconscious mind talks, thinks like a seven-year-old. And that's why we work with the inner child. Because the subconscious mind and your beliefs are childlike. And they begin in childhood. And we really found through this work, and this is why we work together, that that is a beautiful place to work with because the subconscious mind is so childlike. And if we can allow that to flow in when we have these triggers come up, um, we could begin to speak to our subconscious mind consciously. And that's ultimately what we want in order to move the needle in our life. So we're going to close that out now. Obviously, we're fully available for you. I know there is a time constraint, uh, and I know that was a lot of information, but I hope it was valuable and it gives you at least some direction to... Carl's freezing up now. I don't know if anyone wants to turn <laughs> Perfect to time to freeze. <laughs> I think what we were saying is... Um... We'll tie really it up. And if you have questions. <laughs> so Carl, you're breaking up. So we'll have to go ahead. And... Anything else <laughs> but this, that things will only change when you change from within. Okay. That was a good ending. You heard me all <laughs> You're breaking up, but that was perfect. Yeah, that was it oh, actually no. got clear yeah, right, right in that last that. statement, which is perfect. So <laughs> thank you so much for number one, just seeing the value in Juice Plus as part of this journey and being on our team. And just also just having this wisdom and this experience to come in and really help us see differently. And, and I don't know about all of you, but 
that combing the mirror analogy just really hit home for me. Um, and I can, we've had some conversations, Janine, I can totally relate to so much of what you talked, what you talked about with your son. So uh, th thank you. We have, uh, we're past six minutes. So any, Heidi, should we allow a question or two? I, I honestly think this was so valuable. If anyone does have any questions, I did have a question. I just wondered, I think that you were, because you were breaking up pretty bad, Carl, but what I think what you were alluding to is that we can reach out to you guys, right? And I just wondered how everyone out, you know, how we can, how we can do that. Sure. So our company name is Secret to Life Institute. And the website is really easy, secret to life institute.com. Um, um. <laughs> you can email us at info at secret to life institute.com. Those are great ways or however, through the internal juice plus platform, and we'd be happy to answer questions or give you some direction. Cool. Anyone else have a question before we close? And these two came here to to gift us this information. They had no intention. They never asked me if they could speak on any of our calls. It was just that we had, this is the, the week of the month that we do a mindset training. And it just worked out that Nikki uh, was taking her birthday day off and needed someone and their names popped into my head because I've just been getting to know them so well, um, having joined our team and, and uh, it was just the perfect message we needed to hear. So thank you so much. Yeah, so I welcome. think that one thing that we also, I live by and I really do feel this is that the more we work on ourselves, the more things just begin to align. Um, and we don't have to push and, and in leadership and teams, this can sometimes feel really overwhelming, you know, because we want things to go a certain way. You know, we want everything to work out the way that we envision it. And sometimes um, there's a better way. <laughs> and we, we have to trust in that flow and that, that process. And, um, and that's kind of what happened here. You know, we didn't even, it was just magically opened up and we were available and it just happened. And so um, it's definitely a different mindset than where I was many years ago when I was trying to push, <laughs> comb my mirror <laughs> quite a bit, <laughs> so. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you everybody for showing up and for everybody watching online. And we'll be sharing this with everybody who wasn't able to, to attend tonight. So thanks again, Carl and Janine. Good luck, awesome. everybody. Thank you so thank much. You for having so us. Much, thank everybody. you so much. Bye, everybody. Appreciate this Bye. training. Bye.